about a retired 1976 GMC Class C RV. Now Class C means that once we removed the cabin, the camper part of the vehicle, we were left with no back in the cab and no roof in the cab. We were also left with the supports that were for the cabin and the sheet paneling on the bottom. Now we already ended up installing a roof. We had to build that from scratch from parts we salvaged from another vehicle. We welded that in and that is now sitting beautifully on the top of the RV cab. Since that we've welded in a rear roll cage and now we're about to move on fully enclosing the cab. Now before we actually put any sheet metal on the cab I'm just going to go ahead and trim off this floor sheeting here and all these cross members and supports that we don't need just to get us right down to the chassis. It'll, it's, it's a good idea to get this work out of the way first so we can put the deck on later with having to do too much deconstruction. There we go, much better, much tighter, and we'll make it easier to get our U-bolts on for our flat deck. Now, we're going to start closing in the back of the cab. I went up to our donor vehicle and harvested a large side of sheet metal out of the vehicle. I then processed that into one clean, nice, narrow strip, because while I've purchased a 4x8 sheet of steel for the back of the cab, the cab is a little more than 4 feet tall. So one sheet won't do it. So we had to do exactly what you're seeing here and join on a strip to the entire length of our panel before we actually did any shaping. Now after a lot of spot welds, so many tacks, we can now trim down just the loose ends here with a plasma torch down to a four and a half foot by eight foot sheet as we've created. Now there were a couple different ways I could have chosen to do this next part. We need to fit a sheet of steel to the back of this cab. That is the basic thing we're trying to do here. My original intention was to tack it in place as a whole sheet just like this and then rough trim it around the cab, grind it or cut it straight to the cab. I decided that that was going to be a lot more labor intensive so what I actually did is stand the sheet up like this we did a full perimeter tracing and then I rough cut on the workbench and we'll do the final fit and finish later. Neither one of us was to oh, but not just gonna let her drop no, on no. Look at that. Wow. Woo -hoo. Man, you ain't got much room over there. Nope. Boy, now if that can if you could cut that in.
whole corner it's been flush cut corner welded butt welded the entire seam so all that's left is to grind it smooth isn't that nice I've got to keep all my heat over here on the new steel so I've got to come in and I can't just uh, split the difference right here I have to come in at an angle dry my heat here and let it carry just slightly into the main panel which is slightly thicker or slightly thinner sorry a little bit more delicate if I come in on the middle and split the difference I'll punch through I'll punch through like this this material is a little bit thicker so I have to dry my heat right here like I said and let it let it fan in and that is giving a really strong corner join it's actually going really fast and smooth really happy with it see when I marked my sheet I marked it with excess and then I rough cut it if I had of cut it exactly on right on where I marked then the sheet would have to have been in exactly the same place I marked it and then if I had all wavered inside it would have been a problem by doing this rough cutting it I just have a little bit of material to trim off not much at all to flush trim and then I have a perfect corner really I have enough I'm able to just grind it in but in some of the heavier spots I'll uh, I'll trim it off so that's the first step right now I've got it tacked so I'll trim it that way it's not going anywhere and we'll corner about this side and here's how it looks now trimmed and ground basically flush so you can see I've contoured everything I'm going to go weld now drive the heat to the thicker panel let it blend into here same thing up on the roof here so you see some of our tacks are still holding nice and uh, Lincoln Electric 140 multi-process and uh, I'm running it at the third lowest temperature setting or amperage setting and running at number three so the third lowest on wire feed now I haven't looked at the gauge to see if that's proper according to their specs but I don't need to um, that's what works for this scenario here I'm tried a little bit hotter and you just can't the old paneling just can't handle the heat you're punching it any colder and it's not enough heat for the 16 gauge here and it's just spitting and spattering you're not getting a weld you're just getting this little bubble so right there 30 percent or th number three whatever that is and it works uh works fairly smoothly i'm very rarely burning any type of hole or anything in it as long as I keep the heat, I start the heat on my new panel, the back panel. There's the finish we have at this point. We'll body fill wrap the corner just to fill in any small pinholes, things like that. Uh, little pores and stuff, just a scattered one. There's not a lot there, but there's a few just to make it well. But look at that finish. As you saw there, I gave it a scrub down. First, I ground it in with a grinding disc. Then I hit it with a flat wheel, and last I did a Scotch Brite on the on the roll lock or like a, the die grinder. 
No burrs there now. It's rounded, very hard edge. Just really, really happy with it. There's that piece I had to replace. This was a hole here in the body. The rest it out, so I cut that out. Body lines line up good. Also gave that fender a scrub down, started the fanning in process. I won't take it any more than that. The body fill will uh, fill that gap there. It's pretty much fanned in right here. It's completely feathered in here where you would want it that to mess up so it doesn't mess up the body line. Same thing right here. If you remember, we did a butt joint here. So this is pretty much flush, sitting flush here.